What up guys, Song here, and a very good morning to you guys. It is raining. The plan was to leave before it starts raining so I could get to the campsite, pitch the tent, and then I could be all dry and snuggle inside. Um, unfortunately, the weather forecast is gonna rain all afternoon and it's, it rained really heavily uh, just a moment ago and it has kind of stopped. So I'm gonna take advantage of this mild drizzle now to get going. Welcome to the channel, Hong here, and um, it's gonna be a little adventure. Let's go. Okay, so I'm back home, but not because of the rain. It is no longer a mild drizzle. It is now a full on thunderstorm style rain. Um, for those eagle eye viewers, you guys might have noticed that in that little clip of me riding in that rain, in the rain, I had no backpack on me. I went about two kilometers out and I realized, whoa, it's actually quite comfortable today, even though it's raining. Then I realized I forgot my backpack. So here I am back home, picking up my backpack, which I left by the side. And then we continue. For a lot of people, a rain like that might turn you off. Like you might feel maybe I'll wait it out. Maybe I will skip my adventure, but I'm kind of different that way. I love rain. I love running and cycling in the rain because it's just so refreshing. Sure, for some people, you might feel miserable after or during. Um, I don't, I like it. I am all already drenched, right? From top to bottom, I'm already wet, so what does it matter? Let's go. Alright, so the initial plan was to take a scenic route, 16 kilometers, that goes all the way by the sea to Pasteris Park, which is where I'm going to be camping tonight. But because of the rain, I decided to take a shorter route, which is about 12 kilometers. I am about one third of my ways in, and about eight kilometers left to go. And uh, yeah, the rain is not letting down. I'm under a bridge right now, just getting a little shelter but it's really coming down hard. I am drenched inside out, top, bottom, bottom up. But hey, it's part of the adventure. So, time to get going.
All right, well, the sun is back out. The rain has stopped, so it is starting to look really, really nice. Didn't expect river crossing or a water obstacle on this little adventure of mine, but there was. So that was that little bit was cool, even though I got completely wet. The sad part was right after that, I dropped my GoPro and cracked my screen. But it is what it is, right? So let's continue on. All right, guys, we're about two thirds done. We have about four or five kilometers left on the journey and uh, rain has stopped. Still kind of cloudy. It's probably going to rain later in the afternoon again. So um, let's just hope we get to the campsite before that rain comes in so we could pitch the tent and be a little bit more warm, hopefully, or safe um, and dry. I just realized one thing, though. The whole morning just trying to rush a little bit. I guess I could have packed and prepared a little bit better last night. I didn't. I forgot to bring water. That's right. I've got no water. I've got whiskey with me, but I've got no water. So I'm going to have to stop by a convenience store, probably 7-Eleven, and I get a couple of liters of drinking water for today and tomorrow. Such a dum-dum. Anyways. Let's continue on this journey. The Lorong Halus wetland is one of Singapore's many little gems, where ecology, sustainability and national needs blend together into a beautiful area for cyclists, hikers and a wide range of biodiversity. Back in 1941, when Singapore was still a British colony, this very spot was used as a sludge treatment works as a part of a sewage system that served the northern and eastern parts of the island. By the 1950s, parts of the swampland was used as a landfill, which lasted till 1999. Located along the eastern bank of what is today Serangoon Reservoir, it collects and treats water passing through the former landfill, preventing it from flowing into the reservoir. This helps safeguard the quality of water in the reservoir. If you're ever in the vicinity, do drop by and explore this beautiful spot. I've also included a link in the description below for those of you who may be keen to learn more. All right, onward with our journey.
All right, so we got our water and uh, we're ready to go. About two kilometers away from the campsite. We're still in civilization right now, but let's go. All right, so the good news is we are less than two kilometers away from the campsite. The bad news is that it's starting to rain again. All right, so we have arrived at Lazarus Park. I am at campsite one, which is on a far further corner away. Saw a whole bunch of tents already up. Some of these guys probably got here by nine in the morning when the permit starts, or maybe they started camping um, a couple of days before. A, a lot of barbecues happening, which is gonna be a problem because it smells so good. Like I'm hungry. But yeah, so just scouting around looking for a nice spot to set up my camp. The rain has uh, slowed down to a drizzle, so it's not that intense anymore. But uh, yeah, let's find ourselves a camping spot. I'm not too sure exactly how far campsite one stretches down. I got, I rode all the way down to the end and um, there are no tents there. I don't want to be too near too many people. First of all, like I said earlier, if there's too many barbecue pits, it's just going to make me hungry. And that's going to be a big problem for me tonight. Uh, second reason is I want a little bit more peace and quiet. So a lot of families camping out which is awesome, which is great to see, especially the kids running around. But I just want a little bit more peace and quiet. So I'm not sure how far down the beach I'm allowed to camp. Uh, but yeah, let's push the limit a little bit. Let's see if it's okay. Okay, so I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down the beach a couple of times, still trying to look for a perfect spot that is peaceful not sure if you guys could hear that, but that was thunder. And then I looked across the ocean. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I'll try to zoom in uh, in post edit. But right across the water on that side, you cannot see anything because that, my dear friends, is a mega, mega, mega thunderstorm brewing. And it's almost here. So I better find a campsite soon. Or rather, rather, I need to find a place where I can pitch my tent soon. So, uh, I kind of spotted this um, little area on the top of a little slope. It's not exactly a cliff, but 
and it looks pretty nice so let's go all right so this is the little spot i found right up small little slope um towards the beach so i'm a little bit more elevated not too near these coconut trees because that my friends could kill you if you're sleeping and then hits you on the head at night when you're sleeping so i got some shelter got some trees here but uh, not too near the coconut trees so should be safe um wanted to do more b-rolls but that's going to be a bad idea because that storm it's it's already here it's oh shite all right so time to set up camp There we go, tent is now officially up. Um, so therefore, in theory, the campsite is ready. Obviously not 100% because I still have to inflate my air mattress. I gotta inflate the air pillow, stand by my sleeping bag. All that should take about five, 10 minutes. It's just a pumping that takes a bit of energy. Um, but yeah, just as the tent goes up, the rain stops. That's life, right? When you want something or you expect something, it doesn't happen but when you least expect it yeah so anyways rain has stopped weather forecast for the rest of the afternoon thunderstorm so it might rain again um, this is a little spot that I found it's very green and grassy there's no litter it's super clean it's just very very wet I'm not sure if you can see this is that's exactly how wet most of this area is I'm still on a slight incline so as the day progresses if it doesn't rain more the water should flow outwards hopefully um, inside of the tent is wet because when you fold the tent when you keep a tent you try to keep all the windows open so you have more um, air more space more 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 area uh, more openings when you're folding it up for the air to come out so it doesn't get trapped inside the problem with that is when you're setting up the camp or uh, the tent and it's raining like it was this afternoon what you just saw then the water will get inside the tent because all the windows or and door or whatever was left open uh, but I, I don't know if there's any other way if you guys know please leave it in the comments below um, so yeah I'm just gonna continue setting up and let me take back what I just said. I, I said it's super clean, super grassy, uh, super nice on the grass patch. It is very sad to see this though. Over at the beach area, there's quite a fair bit of uh, a trash. I don't think it's left here by people who were camping. Uh, it seems like it washed ashore from well, the ocean. There's a bottle right there. I'm sure if you can see it, it's a floating bo plastic bottle right there. So yeah, a lot of this trash seems to be just washed ashore. And, um... But first, we gotta set up this camp so that it's ready for tonight. Alright, so I'm a little bit more settled down right now. I've got my inflatable air mattress set up, uh, sleeping bag is set up, air pillow is set up, everything is wet. So let's hope the little sun comes out, or rather let's hope a little sun comes out 
and uh, helps dry things out a little bit before it's time to sleep tonight. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. I left home at about 12. That was before I realized I forgot my backpack. Um, so the entire trip took me about two hours, which is quite long, but considering how I kept stopping to take some B-rolls and get some videos, and also it was heavy rain, right? So I didn't want to go too quick. Um, yeah, it took me about two hours to get here. So pretty decent. Um, I'm just trying to dry things off right now. Sadly for me, aside from cracking my GoPro Hero 9 screen um, on its virgin adventure, my shoe decided to fall apart. The sole, I can't do this with one hand, but the sole is uh, coming apart. So, <laughs> good times. All right, so I'm here inside my tent. It's about 4.25 in the afternoon. Seems like there's not gonna be any more rain, but I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed. Um, I wanna do this really quick short video on my um, solar powered fan lamp thingy because it's pretty cool. Let me just flip the camera around. So as you can see, there is a solar panel up top, right? And I'm inside the tent getting some light from this panel right here but you see that red light that means it's charging so most of the time solar panels need to have direct sunlight for it to charge up but this one is pretty awesome because I'm inside the tent right and it's not exactly super bright out it's just kind of bright and it's charging up so that is super thumbs up. I'm gonna leave the link of this in my description box below so you guys can check it out if you guys are keen on getting one for yourself as well. Well, I think since we're inside the tent, I might as well give you guys a quick tour. You've pretty much seen all of it already. <laughs> Backpacks here, my lamp fan thingy, toiletry bag, I've got my GoPro bag. Uh, Goal Zero's charging up my GoPro batteries right now. Uh, water. This is my sleeping arrangement. So I've got my air pillow, air mattress, and sleeping bag. Still a little bit damp at the moment. Um, hope to be able to dry it out a little bit. And this is my view. This is what I'm looking at right now. And this is what I'm gonna be looking at for the next 18 hours. Well, until sunset, right? Cause then it's just all black and dark and then you won't be able to see anything. That's my uh, e-scooter, e-bicycle right there. I'm gonna lock it up tonight uh, just to make sure everything's okay, just to be on the safe side. And yeah, you can see people canoeing. There are a lot of people fishing. In fact, what the hell are we doing inside the tent? This weather looks great now. Let's go out. All right, now that we're out of the tent, um, you can see the tide slowly coming in. And then we have that. Seriously. All right, so I got my food and I'm ready to chow down because I'm hungry. I'm gonna enjoy this little sunset while I eat. You can see the sun starting to come down this way. So naturally that's west. And the uh, sun's expected to be coming up on this side, which is obviously east. And I'm gonna try to get some time-lapse videos tomorrow morning if I could wake up 
and uh, yeah, I hope I do. But we're definitely gonna watch a beautiful sunset tonight. No rains, no rains expected, so we should be good. All right, I'm gonna eat. See you guys in a bit. Oh, that was some of the best chicken wrap I've had in a very, very long time. So for these, for those of you guys who are really into wraps like I am, then check this out. Ohana Barbecue at Pasiris Park. Mm, fantastic. Um, so as you guys already know, I set up my tent when it was pouring rain. So I was not able to get the best spot that I, that I could. Um, so now that you know the rain has stopped and um, my area is still super super muddy and mushy and wet but right here it's dry oh see just step right into that puddle right there so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna unpeg myself hopefully I don't have to set up everything again I just want to carry the tent over to this spot here which is a lot drier as compared to this spot so wish me luck well that was a little bit easier than I thought I can already hear all the professional campers or camping people um, yeah campers all the professional guys think no that's not how you move a tent you're gonna ruin the bottom blah 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 doesn't matter it's okay I had a beer so I'm happy all's good so we're uh, about one hour away from sunset so I've got the best seat in the house So as I'm still waiting for the sunset, just enjoying the cool breeze, enjoying the sounds of the ocean, smashing onto the shore. You know, sometimes we just need to be out of your comfort zone. We need to be just out somewhere else, not home, not in bed, not somewhere you're familiar with. You just gotta step out and get some peace. Speaking about peace, so my bike, my e-bike here, kept tipping over because of the wind. Obviously very mushy grounds. So I fashioned um, a bicycle stand from muscle shells that I found and it's actually holding up pretty well. Still waiting for that sunset. See the GoPro time lapse going on right there? I think you guys would be able to see it in a few seconds. Alright guys, so what a day. Sort of an adventure. In fact, no, wait. It has been an adventure. It has been an adventure because there was excitement. Find myself a gold ring. And, and to be honest, I stood there for 30, 45 seconds, just standing there looking at the ring, thinking, 
what should I do? Because, you know, all parents would tell their kids the same thing, especially if they're young kids. I mean, my parents told me this since I was yay high. And that is, if you see stuff on the ground like this, don't pick it up for a variety of reasons, right? If you're superstitious, then you might be disturbing the peace of something. If you are uh, germaphobic, then you might be worried that, you know, those items might have bacteria or viruses or it's dirty, then just don't do anything about it, right? Tell an adult. So yeah, I stood there for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, thinking to myself, okay, what do I do? Eventually, I came to the conclusion that I'm going to do what I think is right. I'm not saying what I did is right. I'm just saying I did what I think is right. So I picked up the ring, looked into it, saw the engraving on the inside, decided to do that little video, uh, posted up on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, hoping that it would help someone. Why? Simple. There was an engraving on the inside. I don't know what it means, right? But it, it looked like a gold wedding band or gold wedding ring. I don't think it's copper or bronze because it looks like it's been out here for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks. And um, if it's bronze or copper, I think it's going to oxidize and change color. But it was still gold, gold. So, and, and based on the weight, it really felt like a, a piece of gold. So I did what I thought was right, right? I mean, if I were to lose my wedding ring at a campsite, then I hope that I would be able to find it or maybe someone could find it for me. And that's how I, that's, that's what I thought. I thought, you know what, if that was me, right? If that ring belonged to me, I hope one day to find it. And um, so that's why I did, you know, brought the ring to Ohana, um, wonderful food, <laughs> amazing food, like legit good food and good beer, plural, I had three. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how the day panned out. Sunset was not fantastic, not terrible, but not fantastic. I think it was because of the rain and all the clouds and all that stuff. So it wasn't the most beautiful sunset ever. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna try to wake up bright and early at about 5.30. Because over here, this in this general direction, that is east. So the sun rises from the east. I'm gonna try to wake up and hopefully get a nice time lapse of the sunrise. So uh, yeah, and that would be about 11 hours from now. It's 8.30 right now. So I think sunrise is 7.15. So we gotta get the camera ready maybe by 6.15, all the way till 8.15. So yeah, I've got about 10, 11 hours till... Damn, I'm so bad at math. I think I, if I want to wake up at 5.30 and it's 8.30 now, I, it is nine hours, nine hours? Yeah, I'll figure it out. So um, that's all I got for you guys at this point of time. I've had three beers, I've got one more. Planning to heat up a can of clam chowder later tonight. We'll see how it goes. I'll check in with you guys later. Peace out. All right, so now that it's uh, dark and nighttime, I thought I'm gonna talk about a very delicious, yummy, goody, yummy that I brought with me. And um, it is this. From Gracery Pastry. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for mispronouncing it. But uh, this is from my friend Gracie. And she is a magnificent cook, baker. She makes the best. This is chocolate brownies. I'm gonna do a close up later so you guys could get a better look. But this is probably the best chocolate brownie I have ever had in my entire life. 
And I'm not that young. I'm coming on to here. So this is legit, legit the best chocolate brownies I've ever had in my life. And I've had a lot because I love chocolate brownies more than any other dessert. Okay, that's not true. I love date pudding almost as much as chocolate brownies. Maybe, maybe 50-50. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to leave the link of her Instagram in the description box below and uh, check them out. So good. So good. Alrighty, so here we go. I've had these before and they are super addictive. See that chocolate? Oh, I'm not sure if this is going to be sharp, but it is super duper yummy. They're bite size, right? Like it's the size of my thumbnail and just so good. The only problem with these brownies, bite size as they are, is that they're so addictive. Like you have one and you think you have self-control. No. <laughs> with these stuff, with these little brownies, no self-control. Self-control goes out the window. In fact, self-control does not exist. So good. I'm gonna have a couple more. Bye. All right, guys, it's a little bit past midnight. I am beat. I'm gonna go sleep. Hopefully, I get to wake up in time for the time-lapse video of the sunrise. Yeah, good night. See you guys in the morning. So that was the police, 1.45 in the morning, um, just making sure that everything is safe and peaceful, checking my camping permit, um, they were here for 5 minutes, it was super friendly, they were super nice, yeah, obviously I thank them for the service because let's be serious, it's 1.45 in the morning, if you're at work, either you get paid a lot or you truly believe in what you're doing. So yeah, the police dropped by, six of them, which was a little bit intimidating. But uh, yeah, they just dropped by, checked the permit, and um, had a quick chat with one of the senior inspectors. And um, that's it. All right, I'm gonna go back to bed. See you guys in the morning. Good night. Good morning, it is 7 o'clock and the sun is just about to come up. I made good with my promise. Um, I said I'll try my best to wake up at 5.45, 6 o'clock to get the GoPro set up for the video, the time-lapse video of the sunrise and I did. So that's why this video, and I apologize, this video is a little crooked because I'm using my cell phone and I'm using the e-bike seat there's a hole in the middle kind of like a holder so i apologize for the video being a little bit sideways but it should seem it should be okay um yeah so i've slept pretty okay it wasn't that bad the air mattress was really comfortable the one thing i wish i had was a slightly higher pillow but that was not a big deal it wasn't a deal breaker in any way um yeah I'm, I'm not a morning person so i could fall asleep right now but i won't because i gotta make sure that the gopro captures the sunrise there is another problem the problem being according to my garmin east which i thought was this way is actually this way so that means not exactly gonna capture the sun coming 
over the horizon. And it will kind of come over the coconut trees, so it should still look decent. The weather looks good. Thunderstorms expected in the afternoon, so I should be out of here by then. The plan is to pack up and leave by about 9 in the morning, so I've got about 2 hours. The only thing left now is to make sure I get a good time-lapse video of the sunrise. There will be... then I need to go look for coffee. So yeah, checking with you guys in a bit. Well, it wasn't exactly that epic sunrise time-lapse video I was hoping for, but I think it's still pretty awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to end the video now because I think this video is getting a little bit too long and I don't want to bore anyone. I hope I inspired some of you to I hope I inspired some of you to step out of your comfort zone and explore the great outdoors a little bit more. A lot of us spend too much time in front of the computer screen in front of our cell phones, in front of TV. So yeah, thank you all for joining me on my first solo bikepacking camping trip. There will be more to come, so stay tuned. If you've enjoyed the video, if you've liked the video, please like the video, share, subscribe. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna sit here for another hour or so, chill, watch the tide come in, then pack up and go home. I'm on my way home, note to self, Murphy's Law. Anything that could go wrong, will go wrong.